Isn't that beautiful? Hello, hello, it's Robbie from Southern California on a warm, sunny day and trying to get through this in the morning, but the sun is already starting to come through here. I want to do this before the leaf blowers and everything starts. Purple tree collar, let's see if we can walk through quick. Not much new here because I really haven't done anything. All this stuff that's growing is growing from last year. Look at the black cobra peppers. They're still growing from last year. Now the lettuce is done and I need to get the seeds off because this is, you know, what I'm doing is leaving this for the birds. Then I remove the seed heads when they're dry, crush it onto something and then they'll grow and then I have all the lettuce I want. This is the Malabar spinach seeds that have fallen from last year and I'm almost done taking off the old stuff so it will go up. So the new will go up and that will just cover the wall. Tomatoes, all this is from last year. Look at the leeks. I'm almost ready to take it off. I'm in no hurry because as long as this stem is green, it is still feeding off the base. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. Really the wrong time of the year to grow leeks and it's growing. Those I can collect the seeds. This is almost ready. I can take it off and stick it in a flower pot and let it finish. But right now nothing bothers it. No squirrels, no rabbits, so I'm leaving it. And there's another one. See the other one? This one's got a combination, which is so bizarre. It's got a combination of seeds and plants. I don't know. I guess I take them apart. I had this happen with an onion and I took them apart and I grew each individual one and it worked. But I don't know if I want to bother with that. I'll have to see. More tomatoes back here. Look at that. I've got to get that off today. I keep harvesting these tomatoes. I believe it's the Goliath that my daughter gave me, again, from last year. And then this is just tomatoes that have come up, again, last year. They're making a comeback. Keep picking tomatoes. This has been fantastic. A little tomato plant in there. This is all celery that's going to seed here. This is celery seed. And I leave that also for the different birds because we're in a terrible drought right now and they've been really feeding heavily on that. The little, the little bush tits come in and eat the insects and the wrens will come in and eat a little bit of seed and insects too. And then the goldfinches really feed heavy. I wish I had a camera. The other day I was standing here and it was like, wow, I hear birds screaming. What's going on? I was working here just picking some leaves because I collect the leaves. And I didn't realize that as I was collecting leaves, there were goldfinches sitting on here eating and they were screaming at me. It was towards evening and the sun was going down. They didn't want me to bother them because they were feeding. That's how desperate they are. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Celery. Okay, so let's see. I've got more lettuce I've got to pick here. See I'm, what I'm doing here? I'm getting ready. I'm just layering. I'm just putting this on top and then I'll either take some soil out of another tote See, that's lettuce. Or I'll put a little bit of potting soil on top, whatever I want. And then I can get either a squash or tomatoes or peppers or something, whatever. That's an old pepper plant from last year. That's the Goliath tomato. I have been picking a lot of tomatoes off of that. A little geranium I rooted in there along with some green sorrel. Look how big that trunk is on the tomato plant. It's a big trunk, big tomato plant. A moringa that's in a pot. Trying to decide what to do with that. Probably just will leave it. And then peppers, more lettuce. There's my strawberries. More walking onions. There's some, there's a little bit of Swiss chard, but that's, see how they're growing so small. It's a big bulk, a big trunk on it. They need to be pulled out and new fresh Swiss chard grown. Garlic chives, more lettuce. See, here's garlic chives too. Garlic chives are really nice. Look at this. Now this I can move. <laughs> I have an avocado tree growing, so it must have been in my compost and it grew. You know, let me step back for a second. This is an avocado tree, it came up from a pit. Maybe just because it's in there, I might put it in a pot. A couple of you have told me, oh, you shouldn't be composting the avocado trees. You've been trying to grow them. Let's walk through as I talk, because nothing new is here. That you can't grow them and they keep growing for me. Well, they're coming from avocado trees in the area and the ravens have been dropping them and then they grow. If you're buying them in the store and the pits aren't growing, then the plant, or I should say the fruit, has been irradiated. So the seed has been killed. And that's so they'll last longer and they won't ripen that fast. Otherwise, you can't stop them. Get it? <laughs> that is another avocado tree. And you know what? 
I'm trying to see. Yep. It is. No, it is not in the pot. Okay, I thought it was in the pot. It is actually growing in the tote. It is easy to, to move. Boy, that's got a nice straight trunk, trunk on it if I wanted to play around with grafting. But that one, see, they just, they sit here on the edge and they eat their avocados and then they just drop the pit and then they grow. And they do grow easy because they haven't been irradiated. They're avocados, you can't stop them. They're fresh avocados. This I just moved. I took the chair and I'll show you where the chair went. And this needs, uh, well, it doesn't need a good watering. They need to be picked. These are carrots I didn't pick. This is carrot wood. That's a tree. Gee, I wonder where that came from. <laughs> See the seeds? They drop the seeds and then the carrot wood trees grow. Haven't gotten to here yet. Here is where I picked all my potatoes and I haven't put them back yet. By picking the potatoes, I finished off my tomato plant. It wasn't happy with digging around. A lot of times tomato plants do not like their roots disturbed. They don't want the area disturbed. No biggie. I have this one and I could either leave it in the pot or move it, but I want to put my potatoes back. We ate what we wanted. I kept what I want to grow and I want to get that back in the next few days. And then in between there, it's just a bunch of lettuce and stuff and see, new tomato plants coming up here. I was going to plant the potatoes back in here, but these plants look so beautiful. I did here. This is a lettuce. I'm leaving this. See, it's out of the ground. I'm leaving that for the birds. But they look so beautiful, I may leave them. And this is a cabbage plant. I stuck back after I moved the potatoes. But I'm gonna get serious when I come over here. And a lot of that is south thistle and lettuce. And that's basically it. So that's what's going on in the driveway. Let's go to the front yard. I hear kingbirds. If you hear the birds in the background, those are kingbirds. I haven't gotten to this yet, and I have plants, big plants. The squash? is doing fantastic in there. I've got two Coco Zells and one Black Beauty and I keep picking in here so it's doing great. And that one is two tomato plants and I finally have tomatoes. And one of the tomatoes that are growing in there, the plant, the seeds were over 10 years old. So I'm really excited about that. Then I've got more geraniums that I've just, I kind of, you know, put them in pots so I can move them around. This is the, ouch, the finger, <laughs> the finger lime. Look at the thorns on this thing. Do not grab this. It protects itself very well. It wants to protect its little fruit. What else is going here? I've got more geraniums, and then of course I've got lots of walking onions. I really haven't done too much. I have been straightening out. I'm gonna restake this a little bit better up here, but this is loaded with tomatoes. I'm hoping you can see it. Oh gosh, there must be 50 tomatoes on here. Everywhere you look, there's clusters of tomatoes everywhere. This is fantastic, along with my blueberries that I do come through and pick. Isn't that cute? They're tiny. I know. Oh, and this is sal thistle. Really need to get this out because it's taking away. And see, this is yellow leaves. The plant doesn't need yellow leaves. Let's put it back. And now it will be plant food. So that's what's going on here. I've got some... Oh, I have a squash flower. That's yellow squash. I just planted that. Didn't expect the flowers so soon, but it's already got a cluster of fruit. So I've got that covered so the rabbits won't bother it. Right now I'll probably tool it. I've got a tomato plant back there. Haven't done anything here. I'm getting ready. Just some seeds coming up from weeds and stuff. I'm going to compost that back in and leave it there. Then here, same thing, tomatoes. I haven't done anything in here. Just, just coming through backside of Gary's container. He built me the, the cement raised bed, which has been fabulous. And see, I just go in here and service it and get it my way. Just get in there, do what I have to, and then drop it back. And if I have to, I close pin it. So that's what's going on here. Let's see what else is going on here. That's about it. He's supposed to take the mint. He's doing, Gary's doing something with the mint, and I've got plenty of mint. That, I believe, is peppermint. And again, all from last year, and I still have onions I've got to pick in here. White onions, so I'm gonna do that green. No, that's not, that's red vein sorrow. Walking onions, and there's some cuttings of tree color, so I've gotta get out of here. Same thing here, I leave all these, oh! I leave these for the hummingbirds. I have got such great videos of that little guy. Comes right up. See, I'm hoping you can see him. You see him? And he's gone. 
comes here, I'll be right here working or doing something and he'll come right in front of me. I could almost touch him. It's so cute. So you'll see as it goes, we'll get more and more done. This is very subdued and this is the way I like it. Here I have to freshen this up. I'm going to lay some tool. I'll take you with me. I keep telling you I'm going to do it. I had a problem where the rabbits, I think there was a hole. I think I snagged it somewhere and they found it. See, I snagged it and they were eating a little bit, but they stopped. So they haven't bothered it, but I'm going to collect some more walking onions and get that in there. I'm not going to take this down. I'm just going to re, re put on some more tool. I'll show you how I do it. It's really, really easy. Backside of the old redwood table. Years ago, Gary told me he wanted to throw it away. I've gotten quite a few years out of it. A friend of mine gave it to me. She was moving and she didn't want it. And Gary said, it's rotting. I said, I know, but I like it. A little redwood picnic table for kids. Isn't that cool? We'll see how long it lasts for. All right. I have finally gotten to this. See, that's the chairs I moved from the driveway. There were two old chairs and they're metal. So I had these boards from an old thing he found in the trash from some bed or something, they're plastic, probably a water bed or whatever, air bed. So I put that there and now I have a place. I can sit down for a second. Look, I've got a bench here. It's a little dirty, but that's okay. I'm in yard clothes. Isn't that cool? So now I can sit here and I can enjoy my ginger and turmeric. Can you see this? I'm one short of stevia because I gave one to my daughter. Her plant died back. So I gave her one. I've got a growing on the deck and you can do cuttings off of that too. But I love this. And I don't have to worry about overwatering because as you can see right there, all my holes are up. So there's always, even that one, there's always an inch of water in all these. I know I'm doing it wrong. That's not the way you're supposed to do it. But you know what? It works for me. But aren't these gorgeous? Now, let me tell you something. I was going to do a harvest with you and I did not. I haven't harvested. I'm actually harvesting as I need. I want some turmeric. I come out here and get turmeric. I want some ginger. I come out here and get ginger. Now, I'm going to have to separate some because they're, the pots are just so packed that they're bending. But that's why I wanted to set this up because here I'm going to set up all new. See? And this is what I collect because this goes on the bottom of my pots. Whatever I can collect on the ground. Branches. And see that my holes are up. It's a pot I've used for something else. So I will fill this eh, maybe a third of the way up with wood. And then I'll put leaves and soil. Well, that's a little statue that fell down there. Let's move you over. A little frog. But see now my, my ginger is coming up. This is turmeric. This has been, and I have found out something that is a big game changer on turmeric. So we're gonna have to do a video on that very, very soon because I am so excited on what I, I have not seen anybody else do what I'm doing. I'm not saying they're not doing it, I just haven't seen it. And now I can grow tons and tons of turmeric and probably ginger the same way because I've been just starting with the ginger. So we'll get into that. This is the black turmeric. I'm going to be totally honest with you. I don't even know what you do with it. It doesn't taste that great. This was Gary's thing. Oh, we have to have black turmeric. Now I've got three containers of black turmeric. I think he's got one black turmeric growing and I don't use it. Medic medicinal. For what? <laughs> I don't know. It's not the greatest tasting stuff, but I will say it's an absolute beautiful plant. Now these plants here, there is one issue because I didn't pull everything apart and I didn't refurbish and put new leaves in and the way I do it, they're going to struggle a little bit. So little by little, I will be going through them. So they might look a little yellow because they need more plant food, but I'm also going to compost and make some of my own, my own plant food and feed them and that will well, I have watered them a little bit and that's what's making them pop. So we're going to do that. But that's it. It's This will look even full in two more weeks. It's going to be massive. Unbelievable massive. And I do want to harvest a little bit and get some of it redone so I won't be so packed because the pots are just squished because it's so packed. I've got one back here starting and they're just popping out of the ground. There's so many of them. See, they're starting back there. It's just, there's too much. And this, 
this is really nice too. So now I have one storage container, one tote here that's just loaded with turmeric and this I don't have to pull out because it's got all this room. Now ginger and turmeric likes being in pots instead of being in such a big container it actually likes being compacted so it works out really good it must force it to grow differently but it's not doing too bad considering I know what I put in there and it's pretty big for the little nothing piece that went in there so it's doing fabulous I love this so that's the front yard we're almost done now let's go into the bird garden and see what I've done okay let's go into the bird garden and I I am working in here. As you can see, I've been collecting leaves and everything, and I'm still debating on what I'm going to grow in here. Everything is really composting down. You know, that was all kitchen scraps, and I literally just dumped it in there. And look how it's already turning dark and turning in the soil. I think there's things starting to grow. <laughs> look, but I don't want that to grow. I'm going to turn it in. I have a lot of thoughts. Do I want to put ube in here? Do I want to put some squash in here? Do I want to mix it? I could put squash in some ube, so I'm not sure. That's a type of yam. So we'll see. There I've got celery that has gone to seed. I've got some geraniums back there, way in the back corner. Let me see if I can get through here. I've got my original oregano. That's the only oregano I ever bought. And that's where I've got the cutting for the deck. And anywhere else I've got oregano is from that one. So here, look at this. That's the one from eBay purple tree collar. It's so leaned over. I keep saying I'm going to take it out, but you know what? Until it has to go, it will go. Makes great cuttings. These long shoots, look at these long, beautiful stems. They absolutely make the best cuttings. All of these, look how long and straight they are. Cut these and then just root them, and they root so, so easy. So let's see what else. See, now when you cover it, with tool, the birds can't get to it. So here I can take greens off. Look how beautiful the leaves are here. That's what tool is. So you can cover, this is that fine material. I absolutely love the netting. And I'll put the link down below. It's $10 for a bolt that is, what is it? It's 40 yards and 54 inches wide. So I cover some of it so I can use it for my green drink. The birds don't need it all. See what they've done to it? They literally just chew it to pieces. And that's what they're doing. All the birds, the house finches, even the gold finches, you'll see them just chewing away. The little wrens and the little bush tits, they're taking the insects. But the other birds are chewing on the greens. And that's okay. Here, I'm gonna do a video on this. Just a separate video. I have to talk about this. They are doing fantastic, these three totes. These totes are four years old. 4, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, yep, four years old, and there's a story behind that. Why? Well, I haven't done anything, and that's the story. We'll get into that. Okay, here, that's another tote that's four or five years old. It's bent because I let the purple sprouting broccoli get too big. You probably remember it went up to the sky, and it leaned over, as you can see how it leaned. I tried to pull it back. Gary put a stake there, and it kind of bent it, but it didn't break. It didn't break. That's a real big storage container. Super big and still going strong. If I chop that out, and I'm still debating if I'm going to take out the purple uh, sprouting broccoli. If I take it out, I can bend it back and keep using it and layer in there differently. I'm not sure yet, but when I get to this garden, I really start tearing it apart. Bits and pieces. I don't want to do too much. I don't want to upset the birds. Then I'll decide on kind of what I want to do. So I'm not there yet. I'm not crazy about purple sprouting broccoli because it only sprouts really once a year. And then after that, you've got the beautiful leaves, but then I've got leaves from my purple tree collard and they're almost identical. So that's why I'm not sure. I might do cuttings and then take the whole thing out and do something new in here. But then I look at it and the birds come and perch on it. That's why I don't know. So I'm not here yet, so I'll think about it. That's, this is just some mint, this is orange mint, and then this is my lemon verbena that's growing all through here. And my dragon fruit, which has got a lot of buds on it now. So we're gonna have a lot of dragon fruit. Walking onions everywhere. See, I haven't gotten to this. I'm going to redo all this. It's still early, so not all the solar fountains are up yet. The sun hasn't come across the trees yet. 
And I want to get this done before all the leaf blowers and, you know, start going on and the people working on the house up the hill, you know, before they start hammering. So I want to get this through. You know, I'm going to kind of walk through here and decide what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave this stake that holds the bird feeders because, well, my daughter gave it to me and plus I pounded it in the ground myself and it's in there and I want it to stay. Look at the dragon fruit. I have to be careful with that because they come through and they have spikes and I'll be doing something and bam. So I want to tie that up, but I don't want to take it out. I would actually like to grow more dragon fruit. Let's see what else is here. I can swing around for a minute here. This was all my lettuce and garlic. Now I still have the garlic. I haven't really picked any garlic, and I know there's garlic in here. Do I want to try to pick one? No, I better not. I'm going to get all muddy. Okay, there's bar see, this is baby lettuce coming up. See all this? I need to start getting serious on the lettuce, collect some of the seeds. I let the birds eat what they want, and I need to collect the rest of the seeds, just crush it on top of a flower pots or a tote or something and then get the lettuce growing really good. I've got tomatoes growing back here too with tomatoes. See, tomatoes, something got to it. Birds might have pecked at it because I don't see any hornworms on this. And then there was more tomatoes down here. See how beautiful it is? So all in all it's doing good. This is just celery. I will redo this. I'm getting to it. So I'm going to redo all that. Let's keep walking. These are well, you've got the dazzling blue kale. That thing that is about, wow, 10, 15 foot tall now is dazzling blue kale. So that I really do like. I'm gonna keep that, it just looks so pretty. It's like a tree, can you imagine? Look at that. I have a tree in the bird garden and it's food for me and them. If they eat all the tops off, which they did to one I had down there, they'll kill it. So I'm hoping they don't eat it all. And that's why I don't wanna cover all the dinosaur kale because they'll be forced to come over here and eat my beautiful dazzling blue kale. So I want them to leave that. And then these are, they're either collared or they're a hybrid of collared. And that also is growing like a tree. So that's doing really good. Now a lot of this went to seed. Again, they're collared and kale crosses. Once I get all the seeds off, all the seed, you know, the tops off that through the seed, the seed is pretty much gone as you can see. The birds have eaten the seeds. The leaves will get bigger. So I'll have big round leaves again on it because it puts, the plant's putting all its energy into making seeds. See how nice the leaves are starting to come back on this? Because the seed heads, the whole tops have been cut off, but I still have to do this one. So I'm working on that. Let's keep going. You can see all the baby seedlings are starting to come up in there. That's how I end up with all these hybrids. They've crossed between a collard and dazzling blue kale. This is my nicest hybrid. I've got to clean it up. We've had powdery mildew because in the morning we're so damp and so it causes a lot of powdery mildew on the plant. And the other thing is it's throwing seed heads too. So I want to chop it back. This is definitely a hybrid and the leaves when it's not seeding are so dark green and so big you could use them for a wrap. I just use them right now in a green drink or if I'm making anything I want something green. In the winter I put it in soup. That's a beautiful, beautiful plant. And I'm starting to take cuttings off of that. It could be a three-way. It could be, sometimes it looks purple, which makes me think it might be crossed with the dazzling blue kale along with collard and dinosaur kale. In other words, something else grew here. That was a hybrid. Could have been half dinosaur kale and half collard and then one of those grew and then they hybridize when they had seeds and flowers with the dazzling blue kale. And that's how you get triple. You can just keep going. Got Swiss chard coming up, more mint. Now all over the ground is spearmint. I'm not crazy about spearmint, but you know what? I talked about it in my other garden tours. Wow, this whole thing last year was covered. And because we've had zero rain, it's not growing. Only where it catches water from where I'm watering the fountains. See where how it's growing? This, I come through here, I clean my fountain, I water it, and then the water goes down and it's, it's throwing, you know, the, getting enough water. I was going to say it's got flowers already. Look at that, purple flowers. It's getting enough water to survive, but anywhere else, no, the ground is too hard. Containers have been fantastic for that. Look how beautiful this is growing, all the onions in there, and then the tree colored. A piece I put in there is taking off. We've got eggplant. 
Oh, we do have eggplant. Something took a nip on that, but I can peel that and use it. I've picked a lot of eggplant off of this already. Tomatoes on here. I've been picking the tomatoes. I don't think there's any left right now. Again, dazzling blue kale. Isn't that beautiful? The purple on that is beautiful. And then, as you see when we're walking through, I have a whole lot of the purple tree colors. I've got one there, I've got one there, I've got one there. I want to spot that through the whole back of the garden. I think that's going to be wonderful. And as they get too big or, you know, they look like they're going to fall over or they're not growing right, just chop them out and replant the small pieces and they'll keep growing. That's what's so wonderful. You can just keep going and going. More eggplant. These are four o'clocks and they are closed. They are closed for the day. Come evening, they will open up again and the hummingbirds can come feed, other birds can come feed, insects. They open up about four o'clock and then in the morning, see they're getting the sun now. As soon as they get the sun, they close up. So there's nothing there. I'm leaving them. Gary doesn't like them. They're growing everywhere. He looks at them as a weed. And I guess they are, but you know, I like them. So I'm going to leave them and I'm going to get some in pots because it's no work. There's flowers in the garden, no work. Haven't done anything here, but look at this. This is cool. I can't remember if I stuck some seeds in here, but I've been working and moving soil around. And look, I got Moringa. Moringa. And more moringa so I'm gonna have at least three moringas right in here and I think that's really cool I'm not gonna let him get as big as this this is too big this one I leave for the birds Gary asked me you want me to chop it out um you know no it's skimpy and stuff and it does shade this part of the yard but I like it and the birds hang out on it so I think I'm gonna leave it see it's growing in a trash can that's been cut and so it's it's doing okay. I'm going to leave it. These are just cuttings from hibiscus. They would do better if they were in a tote that I'm composting heavily in. I've talked about that in other videos, but I'm really excited about that. Let's see here. Oh, I can't believe this. Still growing strong. Look at all the papayas on this. This one's the strawberry papaya. Look at all the papayas. I really have to water this. Papayas need a lot of water and a lot of food. So here you'll see I keep throwing the leaves in here and that's the root. Let me move this, see? That's the big, big root that it sent out through the bottom. That's why it's all cracked. I mean, you do not grow. What? How many are in there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve trees? You don't grow twelve papaya plants in a tote. That's probably a thirty gallon tote let alone one. So it came up in my compost. I left it and well, it's not hurting anything. It's already, you know, it owns the tote. It's not like I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to move you out and plant something else. The tote is gone. <laughs> but, but you know what? They're doing good. And what it is, is they don't mind being compact like that. But when I water that tote, they get enough water to survive. This is rock hard sand. I mean, it's clay. It's just not sand, it's clay. And they don't get a lot of water, but in there, I water in there and it soaks up really good. And remember, see there's more root here. Oh, that's all root, see. Now remember, underneath that container, that storage container is always gonna have water. So if it doesn't have enough water, and this is just, you know, like that, it can, it's going to have roots underneath because the water can't evaporate up. So there's always going to be water in there. But again, I do water very heavily around it, maybe every other day if that, during the heat. And then I water inside. More baby walking onions from last year. San Marzano tomatoes. Look at this. Cool, cool. Oh, I see spin um, Malabar spinach back there. See the berries? But look at all the tomatoes. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that gorgeous? I should trim this plant up. I haven't even gotten to this. Look at that. It's doing everything on its own. And then here, I've got chocolate mint. I, it's just not organized. I can step back here and see better. Chocolate mint, and then the Swiss chard. That's just old. It really needs to be taken out. These are old totes, too. Probably got them the same time, around the same time. The other ones I bought at the thrift stores. But they're doing really good. They're a little faded because they sit out in the sun all day. But they're doing good. And then there's that. I want to cut that and take the top and probably root it and get this all out once I really get to here and well see what I'm going to do. Nothing going on in Gary's little greenhouse that I can see. I haven't even been in here. Let's see. No, 
he's got some plants and some plants that have to go out. He's got all his tools in here now, it looks like. See? So not much. In the winter, he starts things. In the spring, early spring, he puts seeds in there. I really don't do that. I've got so many other ways I do things. All right, let's go through the gate to the rainbow garden because though there hasn't been a whole lot of change, there has been. Strawberries are doing good. I constantly, constantly am picking strawberries. So that, okay, these are too small. But they've been doing good. So that's, I'm happy with, that's garlic. Potato mint. I'm keeping it covered right now. I made this top. I can take it off right now. Because the squirrel sometimes comes by and takes a nip. And I don't want him to eat my potato mint because I want to split this off. It is too tight. And I want to put it in there. Right now you can take cuttings. And I can start more anywhere I want just by cuttings. Or you can grab the whole thing and I really want to grab the whole thing. A big chunk. I put too many in here and I didn't plan on it. And I kept thinking I was going to get to that. Almost there. I keep throwing leaves and stuff in there. Not quite there, but this is going to be done anytime. That's very special to me. And I haven't gotten to this wall yet, but almost. Just a matter of notching and doing what I do to those buckets and getting them planted. Water fountain's not on yet because, see, we are in the shade. We're early morning. Strawberries, like I said, have been doing good. That's just a bunch of seeds. You probably can see that in the old garden tours. I threw a whole bunch of squash seeds in there just to see what would happen. And, well, they're getting chewed up by the rabbits. This is done. Oh, look at this. We've got squash. So I've got more squash coming in there. And I've got, what do I have in there? Oh, I'm rooting some more. I think it's hibiscus. The tomatoes here aren't doing that good. I mean, they're small. I'm thinking of moving, moving them out. I'm not sure. But the broccoli is doing fantastic. That I'm picking all the time. And you know who gets broccoli. I can bring her out later and get some broccoli. Look at that. These are three... I guess you call them sprouting broccoli. They're like broccolini, and it's, uh, it's my favorite because you can just, see how you can pick them? They just keep growing. The purple sprouting broccoli, it doesn't do that. It goes to flower once, because these are basically flowers, the start of a flower, and then it's done. I like something that just keeps going and going and going. Let's walk through quickly, because there's not a whole big change here. More zucchini I keep pulling out of here, and there may be a zucchini in here I never, oh yeah, see? Actually, that's a nice small one. I should get that. And then in here, this is Korean melon. It's starting to throw flowers. This is a black cobra that I found on by the driveway. And I planted it there, and it's taking off. I want to get the onions out of here. I'm just storing them right now. And all the purple mustard is coming up. Gary said he's going to grab some of the purple mustard since it's coming up on its own. And then I can do something in here. Because I, I think I'm going to do watermelon in here. Celery I didn't plant in here. You've seen all this. We don't need to keep going through that. I'm making compost tea. Oh my gosh. I don't buy plant food. Of course, you buy plant food if you have to. But I make nature's miracle on my own. And it works fantastic. A <sighs> hundred tomatoes in one container. Not the way to go. And yet they're growing. They would do much better if there was just one or two in there. I didn't get to it, but for fun right now, I'm going to leave it. Let's walk around in a circle. Look at this. Oh, what a mess. I made this to show how to make a nursery, how you can throw seeds in there and move it. It's fabulous. You throw seeds in there and you move it. It's like a little hothouse, but here's the problem. You got to move it. I need to make a video for myself to sit down and watch. Move your seeds. I didn't move the seedlings. So now I've got this. And I do believe now I found the tag. I think this is a black diamond watermelon. I'm not 100% sure. But I was trying to grow a black watermelon, black diamond watermelon or a diamond watermelon in the house. Couldn't find the seed and I put something else in there. And I think I brought it out here. And it must have been there, and I didn't see it. Now, these are all tomatoes. This is red roselle. Uh, a lot of these are still in pots, see? So I can just lift the pots, because I did it both ways. Let's walk a, a circle so you can see. This is just packed. This is ridiculous. This is not what I want. I'm actually very upset with myself. Because I want to save the watermelon more than anything to see what it is. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. And then here's the back side. Yeah, how beautiful. And I still want to plant something through here in buckets. I haven't gotten to it yet. yet. But look at the tomatoes. Oh, 
Oh, that's right. The problem is I picked a ton of zucchini. I picked more last night and there's so much. So I try to leave it on the plant so the skin won't get hard. As long as it's feeding off the plant, the skin is soft, it stays soft. Once you pick it, it kind of goes like, like a winter squash. It wants to harden up and it wants to preserve itself until the right time to grow. That's my asparagus plant. We'll see what happens next year. I did this for fun. There's a whole story on that, but we're not gonna get into that right now. And then look at that, more broccoli. I love planting broccoli like this. And that's it, so that's the back side. And nothing else. Let's see, I'm trying to go around here. There's my pizza garden. We'll look at that for a moment. This was a surprise. I had a coriander that grew in here and it was short. It went to seed. So I threw all the seeds in here and I got coriander. Cilantro growing here. So we'll see what I'm going to do with that. I keep it a little covered so it doesn't get full sun and there's no holes in that because it wasn't set up. You go, well, where's the water going? Let me step back. How do you have a tote with no holes? I I'm asking the question instead of you asking. There is gonna be holes. I just didn't know how I wanna set it up. See, I'm still working and I saw my buckets. I go around collecting leaves and sticks and branches. This is what's in all my containers. And then I've only got a small amount of soil on the top. I wasn't sure if I was gonna leave that there and I wanna make the holes at the right time in the right direction. Not that it matters, but to me it does. So there's no rain and it's under the eave. So with no rain and only me hand watering it, it doesn't matter. So that's what's going on here. Look at this, look at this. I have peppers, 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 full and full and full of peppers. I can't believe it. And I've got basil up here too. Little bit back there of rosemary, but that's still in a cup. I've got to do something with this like today. Look at the roots. I put some pieces of rosemary. Let me get that back in there. Yeah, look at this, all full of peppers. I put a piece of rosemary, a couple pieces in the cup and it grew. They just, everything roots when you grow like this. And I need to move it. I really don't need it because I'll walk over there and show you all the rosemary. But for fun, I might do it. Isn't this gorgeous? Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. Look at all the tomatoes. They're all more back there and all through here and all through here. I can't believe all the way to the top and these I, you know how I put this in and I want to do another video for you on this because this has been absolutely phenomenal. You can extend those poles. You can do all kinds of stuff with them. All you have to do is get one in there and then you can just keep going. I've already, see I, is this one? This one is it? Yeah, see I put another one onto this so I can extend these poles as tall as I want, which is really cool. All right, so we're done with that. Look at this, tomatoes, tomatoes. The rabbit comes through and eats the lettuce, but he's not touching the basil, and he's not touching my little bit of thyme. See, but he's easy when he does. I wrap tool around the bottom, so he won't get in here because he doesn't like the tool, but he'll come here and he'll pull it over and eat it. So let him do that. I'm not even sure what this is. That looks like a weed. We'll go back through there afterwards. But got purple basil and regular basil. Same thing in here. See the purple basil? That's purple basil and that's green basil. Oregano, all the oregano is from that one plant. Every time you see oregano, it's from the one plant. Basil here, the blueberry plants are not happy. So I'm going to have to pull them out when I get to it. Maybe Gary will take them, I'm not sure, but the basil's doing good. This is just a cutting I did in my totes. And look at this beautiful, beautiful rose I've got now. So that's basically it for here. Let's walk over here, you know the papayas. I don't want to go into this for an hour. You can go back and watch the videos on it. You can watch all the other garden tours. There's papayas everywhere. Look at that. I need to get the tool on better. It kind of came off. So it kind of blew off or wore off. So I want to get the tool on. Haven't really done anything here, but I am getting ready to put something in here. I think I'm going to put tomatoes. It's on the ground and I end up with the ground squirrels tearing out my squash. So if I lift it, you know, put it on the, I'm not gonna lift it on a chair, but I mean, if I have it up and it's a tomato plant, they don't bother tomatoes. They don't wanna eat the tomato plants. More papayas, more papayas. I've got pomegranates growing all over in here. That's a plant I grew from a seed. So I'm getting pomegranates, let's see, uh, more papayas. And see, I can put tomato plants out here without a problem. 
but squash I have a problem with. They just love the leaves. They've learned to eat it. And there's the rosemary. I've got a giant rosemary bush there. Rosemary, let's see. I've got another giant rosemary bush there and another giant rosemary rosemary bush there all from a pot i bought at the 99 cent store quite a few years ago stuck it in the ground and it grew so that's been really good and let's let's see let's walk over to the cucumbers now we're at my cucumbers look at this this has been wonderful i love stacking storage containers now these they didn't cost me that much. They were 10 bucks a piece on sale. These are a little stronger. These are meant to be stacked. So people buy these and they stack them yay high. And that's what makes it so easy and better to stack. These are a little bit on the thinner side and I don't know how good you can stack them. You probably can go once, but I wouldn't do more than that. But I purposely got this to stack. Look at that. And they're black. And let me tell you something. They love it. I've heard, you know, some of you have asked me, is colors better, is white better? Black is perfectly fine. Your plants are gonna be fine. It does, the soil doesn't get hot from the black. It, I mean, think about this. For how many decades, over 100 years, have nurseries always had black containers sitting on cement, black top, with all their plants that they're selling. There's nothing wrong with using black. So you use the color you want. I think it looks really cool with the black on the bottom and it makes the red and the blue pop and the plants are doing fantastic. They get hot sun all day, 100 degrees, and they're doing fine. We're right in the middle of a hot summer. So no worries, no problem. A lot of containers you buy are black. Keep that in mind. And keep in mind a lot of raised beds you buy too for over $100, they're made out of plastic too. This literally, the way it's growing, there's 50 plus tomatoes on there. That's a midnight snack. It did grow here. It was one of the seeds that, you know, of course dropped and could have been pulled out of a tote or something. Doing fantastic. This is, to uh, tomatillos are starting to come up and I didn't plant them. Once you grow tomatillos, they seem to go everywhere and that's okay. I want them there. I've been picking peas, so there's no peas because I just walk by and so does Gary, snap them off and just eat them. And then there is the cucumbers. I've got one there, I've got one there, and I've got one, let's see back here, I keep picking them, that something took a nip out of. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a cucumber drink out of that one. And that is so refreshing. I absolutely love it. Look at the tomatoes here. Aren't they gorgeous? Look at this. That is down there. These are just some squash, young squash. I have been picking squash. Oh man, yeah, look. We're going to get all kinds of zucchini on here. Another tomato plant back there. Look at this. Don't worry about the color. You picked, oh, 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 I didn't see that. Look at this. Now my cucumbers are almost done. I don't pick them fast enough. When you let them get this big, it actually will send a message to the plant that you have done your job. You have produced seeds because that's too big. It really is too big and the plant will die back. And it's okay, because I've started a whole bunch of new cucumbers. I'm gonna get new cucumbers in there. If What I'm gonna do is plant them right next to them, but if the plant continues to look that bad, and plus we've been like damp in the morning and it's causing a lot of powdery mildew, I just trim off the worst of the leaves. But if it looks like it's really on its way out, I'll take it out. If not, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna get spot in. I'm gonna spot in some more. I will probably move some soil over See, only on the top do I put potting soil or whatever I've got. I'm going to probably move it over a little bit, put some more kitchen scraps in there, and then cover it up again and keep going. And then the onions are layered. So it, you just do it whatever way works for you, and this works for me. Even the tomato plant is layered. It's a little independent. I water it, but then the squash will always have water from the layered pot that's in there. Oh my gosh, no wonder the plant is dying. I did not even see that. Oh, jeez. I'll leave that there so I remember to get... I didn't see that. And that is what can cause a plant to die. Because once cucumbers are successful, a lot of times the plant will die. But, you know, just plant some more. We're in summer. Walking onions have not gotten to here yet. More walking onions. Garlic chives, again, just stuff that's come up. Haven't gotten to that yet. Squash! It looks a little sad. I went back at my old videos and it looked so much nicer last year. Here's what happened. 
we had a major ground squirrel attack and what they did these poor plants a lot of them have to start over and I got to get I keep getting squash off of that there's another one that's got to go you know how many are on here and there's another one back here what okay what's what I was saying is I had some ground squirrels getting here and they ate the center of my plants out was I upset of course I was upset See, they've taken a nip off of that, which is okay. I'll still use it, it's perfectly fine. But by eating the center out, I really thought I was going to lose them, but that one's coming back, so they're kind of coming back. Got more squash back here. Ay, yeah, yeah. So they're working harder to come back, but in the meantime, oh, look how big that one is. I've already started more seeds in the house, and I'm going to just kind of go through here, spot in some new I may actually layer them. I probably will. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I may put a flower pot or a floral pot and layer the new squash in here, load it up with leaves and rotting matter from the yard and kitchen scraps, and then put a little bit of potting soil or soil from the ground. It doesn't matter at this point and plant the new ones so they will have a lift a little bit away from the old plants and whatever does better. I can always take the old plants out at any time. Look at that. But I did drape a little bit. Got some that didn't get fertilized, but some that did. It's open on the top so the bees can come in. It's just to stop the squirrels, and it has. Obviously it has, the plants are there because they went through and chewed the center out of almost all the plants, just the center. They wanted that new growth, it tastes better. Now I got a tomato growing back here. Got another squash flower, got a little moringa. It's very sad. Remember up against the wall, I might have mentioned this, there's a footing because of these walls being so big that comes way, way out. So there's really not much soil under there, maybe a foot, if that. So that moringa has to bring its roots out this way. And so they're never gonna get really, as I say that, and we've got the big one there. They're really not gonna get that big here, but we'll see, it doesn't matter. I'm not trying to get them big. Yes, I've got a big gray squash there. Those are gray zucchinis. Look at this tomato plant. This is last year's tomato plant. Isn't that nice when something comes back on its own and you don't have to do anything? And look how beautiful the walking onions are. All done, the most beautiful, really the most beautiful container up against the wall. And the only one I didn't do anything. Came up on its own. Hey, I was here last year, weather's fine, looking good, I'm going. And that's what he did, all on its own. Gary hasn't gotten to this yet, but he will soon, he says. He's got, the problem is we take on too many projects. He takes on too many projects, I take on too many projects, and then we do spread ourselves thin, but eventually it gets done. That is an amazing plant, and I've talked about that. Chia seeds I had in the freezer for over a year, just threw them there and they grew, and they're beautiful, and nothing eats them. I shouldn't say that, I'm gonna jinx myself. Nothing eats them. I can't figure that out. No insects, no squirrels, no rabbits. They probably don't know what it is. Years ago when I first started gardening, not, you know, four or five years ago, I had green Swiss chard growing everywhere. When we got some rain, the seeds would fall because I had Swiss chard growing and I came out and it, I wish I did videos and I didn't. Everything was a field of green. We had Swiss chard growing everywhere. The rabbits, I had tons of rabbits. They never touched it. They didn't know what it was. The, now that they know what it is, forget it. They're gonna just eat it. Gotta get that pump going. Maybe it just needs a little cleaning or maybe it just needs a better start. Sometimes they get dusty. Oh, that was what it was. There it goes. So it just needed to, like a restart when you put your hand over it. And these are more pomegranates, and I'm gonna get to this too, more pomegranate trees that I grew. Isn't that beautiful? Hummingbirds love these flowers off these succulent plants. They get in there and they really feed really, really well. All right, so there's my hummingbird. That little stuffed animal sitting there. That was a stuffed animal. I'll put the link to that video if I remember underneath. And I turned it into, it was a parrot, and I turned it into a hummingbird, made a stand for it, and it just sits there. I need to put it on a pedestal. Okay, let's walk over here. Oh, they're starting to work on the house. I was hoping I got out, out here early enough. I haven't done anything yet, but I know what I'm gonna do this year. Instead of trying to do anything fancy in here and dig anything out, which I don't dig anyways, 
I'm going to, I think I'm going to plant in buckets. So I'm going to start collecting stuff from around the yard. I don't know what's growing in here. Oh, these are weeds. No, they're not. They're Swiss chard. I was not ready for this. I'm going to layer this in buckets so I don't have to do any work. I come through here, I remove the seeds, and just chop and drop in a bucket and grow. So that's what I'm going to do here. And so yeah, we're going to have to finish this up. The apple trees, Gary informed me, got attacked. Yes, they did. They did. He told me, he told me earlier they got attacked. The deer came through here. A lot of animals are having problems finding food. Usually the deer come through here in the spring and they don't bother anything. See what they did? They ate the top of my apple tree. It's not going to grow apples anyways, probably. These are all grown from seed, came up on my compost, and I thought, you know, instead of composting them, I'm going to go ahead and see what happens with them. There's a tote. This is sage. Walking onions. I just love having totes on chairs. Nothing bothers it. Obviously, the deer don't like sage. And then my nectarine. Oh, did they get my nectarine? No, they didn't. If I was smart, I would tool it. Nothing's got it. There were three, though. I only see the one. Is it ready to come off? You know, almost. They'll probably get it when it's ready. There were three on here. So, but it's a start. It, what, the main thing is next year, you know, now that I have three this year, these are seedlings that come up in the yard. I'll have a whole bunch next year. And then the chair garden. I think I have a pepper. <laughs> Look at that. I have a pepper. Last year's plant. This is all lettuce seed that has to be pulled out. I need to pull all that out, compost it, grab all these seeds. This is not a good place to probably grow lettuce because it's going to be in direct sunlight all day from morning till night. So what I'm probably going to do is get more tomatoes going in here. I want to get my watermelons growing in here. This is last year's tomato plant. Isn't that something? And then these are tomatillos. There's too many. When you have too many like that, they struggle and then you end up getting less than what than you would have had if you had just a couple in there so I'm going to thin that I haven't done anything in here this is all still doing everything on its own and yet I come out here and I harvest celery I harvest which I don't see right now parsley is in here I harvest so many tomatoes it's been unbelievable how many tomatoes that I harvest this one's already dried up I got to get these off just keep harvesting tomatoes. This zucchini, I think I moved, it's a squash, it's not a zucchini. This I'm gonna get rid of, but that's what I'm gonna do. See how I layered it? This one got all chewed up by a squirrel. I brought it over here. I got that great big yellow squash. That's right, this is like a yellow squash, but I'll probably compost that. And then this is popolo. This little popolo plant, God, this, gosh, this stuff smells. My hands smell so strong from this. This is what they use when they don't have cilantro, a lot of people sat here all winter as a teeny little plant. The moment the weather was right, it took off. That I will leave. I'll clean that up a little bit. Maybe I'll get the celery out. Let the popolo, oh my gosh, the hummingbird scared the living daylights out of me. I don't know if you saw, but he flew into my face and I leaped because I thought it was a fruit beetle. I saw a fruit beetle the other day. Um, oh my gosh. Anyways, I'm going to get the celery out, leave the popolo. Gary absolutely loves popolo. One leaf, if you grow it, and you're not real big on spices or this taste, you only need one leaf in a dish. It's all over my hands. It's that strong. More lettuce. So all this just has to be freshened up. I had a rose bush in here. I, you, you saw it in the rainbow garden. I moved it out. I'm going to end this by just saying that because that is something I love doing. If you want to like do cuttings from plants and you're growing in totes, and I absolutely love growing in storage containers, take some cuttings and just put it in your tote. And then when it starts to grow, move it out. You could do that with anything. You can do that with fig trees, cuttings. You can do that with other plants. You know, tomatoes if you want to do a cutting that way collard kale anything you do a cutting in the tote because the tote is so rich if you're building it like me and you're putting in all those leaves and everything in there it's mother's nature's soil that is so rich and beautiful perfect that everything wants to root in it and I have rooted fig trees that way and my daughter's got a full-size fig tree that I did exactly that rooting it in a tote so I think that's it. This is the avocado tree that came up from the wood chips that were dumped here years ago. Ah, we'll see, maybe one day we'll get around to grafting it. But right now, if he doesn't remove that cage one day, he's gonna have to cut it off. 
right now it just sits there he likes it and it'll be a nice shade tree actually if I need another shade tree and let's oh let's end it with the hawks they're gone a couple babies are hanging around the nest is up on top there they had three babies this year last year five and they've been flying around periodically I see a baby but they're very independent except for when they see their parents and they're screaming but now they're foraging all over all over looking for food and well just enjoying life so with that have a wonderful day and don't forget to eat what you grow bye bye <laughs>